You all probably have heard of Thomas the Tank Engine. It has, for one reason or another, has been an overnight sensation. Whether you like the show or not, you've got to admit that its success is rather impressive. However, it raises one question. Britt Allcraft, who was working on other series at the time, such as The Magic Adventures of Mumphy, how'd she, along with David Mitten, make a TV show from a storybook series that the Reverend W. Audrey made in the 1940s for his son Christopher, instead of working on her own ideas? Maybe it's because she's nostalgic about reading the books at the time, or something. I read this story a few years ago. It was about six boys who went to the same school and died on the same day. January 25th, 1980. A friend of mine from Chicago sent me the article from a small newspaper. I forgot about what it was until I was watching some of the episodes of Thomas and Friends and realized the original six engines are surprisingly similar to the six boys who died. I decided to look for the article again. The paper either got shut down or I misremembered the name. So I tried contacting my old Minecraft buddy and asked for her for the article. Turns out that she had the article saved to her computer and I was right. There was a definite connection here. The first boy was Kyle Antonio, who was the inspiration for Henry. A timid introverted boy, was classmates didn't know was that he was constantly abused by his mom and stepdad at home. His mom conceived him at age 17 and she blamed Kyle for damaging her life. This made Kyle self-conscious. His stepfather never liked taking care of him when his mom was away, so he would lock him in the storage room and leave him there, sometimes for almost a whole day. His mom somehow tolerated this, and as he got older by the days, she would slap him if he talked out of turn. When his half-brother was born, the abuse got worse. He would be starved, forced to sleep outside, and sometimes being outright. He was also prone to illness as he would sometimes also not feel well and this abuse did not help at all. His only friends were animals he would rescue and take care of, which his family would make him get rid of. He also wore shabby clothes and had low self-esteem. He was also often picked on by other classmates. He committed suicide from overdosing on Valium. In his steam engine counterpart, he still is timid and gentle and sometimes prone to illness and is friends with animals. The next boy, Ted Richards, was always one of the more popular boys. He was rich, smart, and handsome and had seemed to live the charmed life. However, his parents would often argue and were only together for appearances. He was held up to a high standard, which made him become a bit of a perfectionist. He wanted to be a modeler and live in England, but his parents wanted him to stay in Nebraska and marry a proper woman, one of being a good parent and high income. For the most part, his parents ignored him and let him do his own thing. His parents' only concern was the appearance of staying rich and high social standing, but in reality, his mom only married his dad because of money and because they were in a really bad amount of debt. His parents were losing money and very fast too. This is what got him into becoming a modeler as he would make his own fashionable clothes and other stuff to maintain the appearance of being rich. He died in the car crash when his parents were arguing about money. His neck was snapped upon impact and he died instantly. He was clearly the inspiration. For James. In his steam engine counterpart, he still acts like he is splendid and likes to act like a modeler by showing off a shiny red paint job. Then there was Michael Tuckers. Michael was a competitive and strong boy. He was also sought out to be the best, especially at sports, track in particular. He also had an older brother too. And since his dad wanted to have another child, but Mike's mom was incapable of having a third child, his dad would often have the family dog be the third child. In the end though, 
He loved his mother, father, and older brother, and was more happy to play sports with his dad and his brother. He excelled at them. By the time he and his brother were in high school, after being were in fact being sought out by colleges and athletic scouts from all over the country, this man even tried harder than before. He always wanted to compete in the Olympics. However, when he was 18, his mom, who was told that she never would have a third child, had a son. After that, his parents didn't pay much attention to him, which made him more determined for success. He ended up pushing himself so hard that he forgot about his friends, grades, brother, and personal health. At one point, he was so desperate he tried taking steroids. But what he and his family didn't know was that he had a mild heart condition that the steroids worsened. And since he pushed himself so hard physically as well, during a track competition with his brother and a few other competitors, he collapsed during the match due to a heart complication. He died in the hospital. In the show, Gordon is the one that acted the most similar to him. The boy most similar to Edward was Bob Sanderson, an honest yet wise boy, just like the engine based off him. But what the show didn't mention was that his home was run down and his family was always struggling with money. He would often work odd jobs under the table to help support his family. He had many brothers and sisters and was the second oldest son, which meant it was up to him and his older brother to take care of the younger ones. This meant he didn't have any time for any extracurricular activities to do or do his homework on most nights. He had an uncle who would keep offering to send money to his family for support, but his parents were proud and confident and always refused. That is, until his dad died from a heart attack in 1965. His mom shortly died after, having killed herself due to the pressure of taking care of everyone. They were taken in by their grandpa, who wasn't as capable than the parents when taking care of them. Bob himself often helped out with other families' yard work to help support his family. He died when he flew off of lawnmower after hitting a pothole and the mower went over him. In his steam engine counterpart, he is still a wise, honest, and kind engine who is willing to help other engines in need. Percy's inspiration probably has the sad story. Noel Abraham was a foster child and moved from home to home. His biological mother killed his father and herself in a fit of rage when he was six, and he could never settle in the good home. Some of the foster families would take him in, believing that the financial support adopting him would bring them, and would often refuse to feed or clean him. Even when he was in the home of a good family, the old memories would come back to haunt him daily, breaking his fragile ego into a billion pieces. He would have nightmares of hearing his father screaming in fear and his mother saying that he was next, and by the time he was a freshman in high school, he completely snapped. He began to hallucinate and freak out in class. Many of the other students and teachers thought that he was hyperactive and was trying to be funny. He would also paint some really good paintings, write and talk about fantastical things, and dress up in the over-the-top clothing. He'd also help deliver the mail to the school staff's mailboxes in the staff office. While his condition was getting worse and worse, the voices and images getting more demanding. He died from drowning when one of the voices told him he could carry his backpack with him while in a swimming pool. What makes the last fact even more chilling is that Percy actually pulled a passenger train through a flooded field in the episode Percy's Promise. The last. Thomas the Tank inspiration was a A student who went by the name of Ricky Little. He was held up to a high standard from a young age. His older brother was always getting awards for academic achievements, and he was held up to the same high standards. He ended up neglecting other facets of his life in order to get the best grades. For a while, this worked, and his parents were surprised they didn't have just one genius child, but two of them. 
that is until a private academy for the gifted students took an interest towards him. Among several other students, he knew this would be the opportunity to show that he's perfect for this academy, but he knew there would be a huge test in the essay to get in, and there were little spots and lots of pressure. He focused so hard studying that he forgot to sleep or eat at times, and as his test came closer, he got nervous and decided to use an online essay to copy which resorted to flunking the test. When he was caught, his parents were horrified and he fell into a deep depression, and eventually committed suicide by walking on the railway tracks and got killed by an ongoing train to save himself the shame of being an imperfect son. You might be wondering why Britt Allcroft would be inspired to make a sweet, innocent children's show inspired by these dark, depressing events. Maybe she felt like she needed to give these boys some closure, or perhaps to tell their stories in many ways she could. Think about it. In the character gallery on some of the Thomas the Tank Engine DVDs that show episodes from seasons 1 through 7, as well as on the Thomas the Tank Engine wiki page, each engine has a bio description talking about them. It clearly makes you wonder about each boy's death in real life. As in the show, Henry is timid, gentle, is friends with animals, enjoys nature, but is prone to illness. James is a splendid red engine who likes to show off his shiny red paint to the other engines and passengers. Gordon is fast, strong, and pulls the express and has an older brother. Edward is a wise, honest, yet kind engine who is always willing to help another engine out in need. Percy is happy while pulling the mail train on the island of Sodor, and Thomas was gifted a branch line of his own, along with two faithful coaches named Annie and Clarabelle. Maybe, just maybe, she wanted to give the spirits of these boys what they always want in life, and I think they are happy. <laughs>